this is another round of test. Uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, so this time around, I am not going to be streaming live because uh, there's some problem with the quality. So I'm going to try to do that recording in pre uh, prior to uploading to see how this goes. Uh, so there's no loss of quality. Okay, let's get back into our drawing. There you go. So last time that I was working here, um, I kind of came across the fact that this was not generating 2D lines, but uh, I'll have to say something about that later uh, because I, you know, maybe uh, it is not yet supposed to generate lines, but uh, uh, it's one of those things that highlight the fact that when you're a bit used to a program, there's certain uh, functionalities that uh, seem to behave uh, in uh, the experience in some kind of intuitive way and so when you don't get them to behave uh, so when you're using them and they don't behave in, in the expected way you know um, you know so it, it appears as if there's something wrong with it but um, uh, but I'll talk about that later uh, on another uh, when I'll be talking about uh, drawing uh, uh, tech draw and uh, uh, putting this on drawing sheet and stuff like that because that's actually where I was generating that uh, uh, notion but uh, before that I'm going to uh, highlight why uh, having uh, the ability to generate the section plan um, on you know it is like this is kind of cool and crucial uh, in this kind of workflow so for example if I were to you know uh, usually I will select uh, this uh, let me hide this section plane first and uh, I'll select this bed rectangle and my pl working plane is good it's on the top okay so I can copy that now snap that from here to there like this and so what's gonna happen is that uh, now I have the ability to uh, check my drawing so um, the cool thing about it is that when you model in 3d maybe not everything is right so uh, once in a while you can inspect your drawings and come and see if everything looks right you know I've had that kind of thing happen to me before where I noticed there were some errors uh, or you know some inaccuracies in into the drawing once I generated a 2d drawing so it had to force me to go back and readjust the 3d uh, where the problem was and so that's one of the things that is good about uh, being able to generate so in a way it's uh, it's you know the floor plan view of other programs if you want it uh, that if you want to put it that way and so uh, and so it works kind of like AutoCAD but it's not like AutoCAD because uh, if you update the 3d model obviously the floor plan is going to you know update here as well um, I can show you that very simply by let's say um, just moving um, that column there let's see I want to go to selection and select that I rather want to move um, the base if the base uh, sketch uh, not a copy and if I were to move that there like this as you can see the floor plan updated so it's kind of interesting to have this ability to always uh, work and, um, and on the floor plan so it allows you to you know always look at what has been generated and see okay is that good is that right is that accurate is it the way I want it so the second thing is uh, why this is kind of cool this way is because when you're trying to put things like uh, dimensions on um, or annotations uh, you know maybe going inside the 3d model it's a bit annoying or a bit um, frustrating to have to let's say snap to all of these things so sometimes what I do is I just generate the floor plan and this is what I begin to annotate before uh, I export my annotation onto the initial drawing for final layout let me show you what I mean by that Okay, so um, I'm going to um, toggle off um, my what is that construction mode, and so maybe I'm going to make a, draw a small box here as reference. Uh, 
select that and um, make it the same height, the same length. Oh, good. So what I can do is select that, move that right here. This is a way to organize my my drawing uh, annotations uh, dimensions. Copy that here, and then copy that here, like so. Since uh, FreeCAD does uh, does not yet have an ability to. I mean, maybe the sketcher has that ability to kind of snap uh, with within uh, certain guided uh, measurements, but not the the, uh, uh, the dimension tool from the drop workbench. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side as well. Uh, copy that here, like this. So like that. There, copy. Okay, select all that. And you know, this is also a bit of manual work, um, but it reminds you of the AutoCAD days. But uh, you know, FreeCAD is gonna get there. Um, so you wanna do the same thing on the other side. Copy that like such. Copy. Bingo. And this. Do the same thing. Copy. Okay. Now, what you want to do is. Let's see that this was a real drawing and we wanted to be a bit serious about it. Um, so let's uh, go back to CAD so we can work in 2D mode. Uh, okay. Our view is in the orthographic, so that's good. And our working plane is top. Okay, that's good. So, um, so you will just basically um, select probably your overall dimension first like this and I am still in construction mode so my dimensions appear in construction mode so I want to toggle that off and then um, go back to construction mode and then do this and so now I have some place to snap to right there okay so I just do the same thing um, actually maybe not in this edge you don't need to go that far so select that and snap it there and then the next one we're just gonna say okay from window to window uh, select that like this that's telling us where the location of the window is on the wall to the center of this window. It doesn't want to snap to the center of that window. Uh, let me see uh, extension. Okay, so if I grab you from the center. Um, Okay, that middle point is conflicting. Okay, as you can see, I have the sketch window that I had before. So maybe I want to delete them or hide them. So delete, delete. I'll keep the doors, delete this, and uh, keep the door as well, and delete this one as well. Okay, so let's try that to see if our snap is going to work. Um, center, back on, grab from there. Let me 
see there's an element there if I hide this I bring this back can I snap there mm. no all right I'm gonna cheat here so we can move on um, turn that off put that line there this is a this is what open source is all about <laughs> cheating your way or hacking your way to move forward okay so you do that and so maybe this door is gonna bug me again so I'm gonna make a copy of this thing all the way to that center like such and then um, grab another dimension line from there to there Bow. okay there to there Boop. all right great um, so on this side there's only one information the entire length so we just snap that there should be good on that side and so when you use the snap here for example the direction that you start from is uh, kind of important if you want the dimensions up here on what side so if I let's say start to snap from here to here and bring that uh, dimension out like this you see that um, the, the the text is on top of the of the dimension but if I were to let's say snap from here hold on delete that snap from here to there you see that it's inverted but you can always change that you know if you come to the property here or the view um, it says a flip text true and so there you go all it is just a question of flipping that so it's really up to you um, okay so we have that uh, we go on we grab this guy and so I want to get this door uh, this corner what I'm going to do is press control and in this direction and so it's going to lock it there and so I can snap it here and then snap it here like that and so do the same thing grab that and then do that and then do that and then um, grab this we want the overall of course and hanging on here and um, and then we want the little uh, information so we're gonna cheat again here we do that um, we uh, we do that we do that so in this instance the dimensions are not yet um, intelligent you know like in a program like Revit or you know even uh, ArchiCAD they're not yet intelligent but eventually they'll get there you know it's just a question of uh, evolving free CAD to that level in time um, so grab that and that here grab this and this here and then uh, do this let's see we want to know how far this door is from here and I can flip that it true and grab another text like this 
delete that as well. And another one now. And we are clear for this side. Okay, and let's do the same thing on this side. On this side, probably there's two information. The total length, like this. So we put it right here. And the second information is going to be um, those ang those corners, and here as well. <coughs> okay. Um, so now we can probably edit the interior, some of the interior information. At this point, if I'm done with this, I don't need these lines. This is one of those areas where, um, you know, free cat is not yet as productive as it could be. Um, so let's assume we want to know this. Okay. Um, we also want to know this. We also want to know this. Um, we probably, you know, let's assume we wanted to know this as well, as well as this. Okay, that is good enough. Maybe we also want to know the interior dimensions. that okay let me just draw an interior dimensions uh, from here to this interior wall and snap it here so now I know that I can also tell it to tell me um, the thickness of this wall like this and snap exactly there and uh, from here to here just redo this I like when everything is neat, clean, professional, professional. So that's what our dimension is going to look like. So, oh, of course, so this is why I like to do it at one shot because then you can get as much dimensions as you can and you can just have them all lined up like this. Um, you know, all of them like this. And so selecting them and playing with them is a lot easier this way now. So. All I have to do now is create a folder. I'm going to create this folder. I'm going to call it, uh, I had here a 2D line work. So here I'm going to call it annotation. Annotations. And maybe I'm going to create another folder, create group. And so inside annotation, I'm going to create dimensions, rename dimensions like this. So. I am going to select all of this and drag it inside the dimensions. So I can easily toggle them on and off as needed. I can also turn off the construction line as needed. Uh, you know, for those little guides that I was using, I could have also just drawn in some uh, construction lines with them instead. But it's whatever at this point. Um, so then I can edit those dimensions a little bit like this 
uh, you know I like when the line is a bit offset you know I right now it looks too close to the object so I want to reduce that a little bit um, so it, that has to do with um, let's see the what is it called um, extension line so I'm gonna reduce that to two okay that looks a lot better and also the thickness of those lines line width one that looks a lot much better it looks like some real dimension lines now and then I, I can hide the construction and turn the map off um, maybe reduce the text size slightly it looks a little bit too bold so uh, text size will be uh, text size font size let's go for uh, one five much better but I think that one will be good uh, to tiny too but it reads well I think no, you can still see the numbers if you were at this distance from this from uh, the drawing so that is looking good the next thing you do is you do add some text of course um, so grab the text tool and to that see um, <coughs> kitchen go uh, to caps lock kitchen enter enter that's my kitchen my kitchen it's interesting it doesn't highlight when you select it but I am sure that in the previous versions this is free cat one five so let's try that text tool again kitchen okay so there you go so when you highlight uh, you hover it highlights so you know when you've selected it but and this new version that's a change so I selected I can tell I selected it but it doesn't highlight like all the other things strange okay so now I can uh, just maybe move him at a little corner that was a copy since that was a copy I can just select this guy and then grab him here and then simply come here where it says text label check this and change that to bathroom like this select this kitchen copy that and here I'm going to say living okay and uh, down here uh, leaving check that and uh, 
select that copy again and I can just call this place um, uh, I'm gonna call that entrance court is looking funny Freecut is not very good with fonts and text editing so uh, line spacing let's go for one much better okay so this is one way of uh, let's say doing the text annotation but um, but let's say I wanted to get the area of this place, this information. Um, you know, ideally, uh, what you could do is, let's say I wanted to know the area of this bedroom. I could just draw a box like this. And if I were to just select this shape, click on it it will tell me the area is 10 uh, 10.84 meter square okay so uh, you could either do the text manually as well where you come in here and enter all the text as well uh, but uh, I wanted to show you the architecture uh, space um, which is a very interesting tool because it also has some parameters some parametric qualities to it as well um, so how does it work well it works on the uh, we have to do it on the real model but so let's do it um, I'm going to use this as a reference to sketch the, the, the volumes itself so uh, for example the bedroom I'm going to select this face I want to know the volumetric information of that bedroom uh, for the living room and the kitchen together I can just draw a square around here like this okay and also for this bedroom Probably I want the bedroom without considering the bed, the, the, the closet as one of the spaces as well. Uh, it's one of the volumetric informational spaces. Um, so I want to select that. Maybe here I'm going to select this court. Copy this. Put it here and then rename that. Uh, data rename that closet so it's easy to see what it's gonna be and since I have an annotation folder I'm going to create I'm going to create another one uh, this one I'm going to rename that and call it um, uh, text simple as simple just simply text text okay so next one two three four five and I can put them there and so that keeps everything organized clean so um, okay so back to the spaces to the architecture spaces so I'm going to select this um, faces that I've created and uh, bring them back on the original drawing so I can extrude them copy that actually not a copy just bring them there okay top view uh, let me hide this for better for better clarity and 
go to change the view, no shading. Sorry, no shading. Uh, wireframe hidden. No, I'm just gonna change no shading. Okay, select all of them and go to select the face, the working plane. Select that face, that face. Uh, assign that so I can extrude it along this face. So I'll select that and simply create an extrusion. Extrude that. Extrude that. Select that one. Extrude as well. And select this one extrude as well just like that okay so now i can select all these and um you know maybe i want to bring back the face back down uh so now i'm going to select this and tell it to be an architecture space so i know it became an architecture space because it has these dashed dotted lines around it do the same thing here Palm and palm. Okay, so now let me show you what is interesting about the architecture space. Uh, so now it gives me this information. So you see, space 16, blah blah blah, meter square, space da da da, and this one as well. It's there. Okay. So what is cool about that is that top view and wireframe so I can edit this information so I want to select this one that that's a space I select this and I can call that bedroom uh, let's see what does it say space 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 uh, not the line spacing but the space data space okay label come on uh, space so I can rename that I just say bedroom okay so this guy I'm gonna call that living in kitchen Uh, or I see communal space. I think that free cat just crashed on me. Okay. Let's see what our recovery manager says. Recover recovery start recovery not yet recovered mm -hmm. finish okay so how far do we need to go <laughs> uh, court entrance to view architecture So this, oh, now it highlights, so it was probably just a bug, whatever. Interesting. So select that again. And line spacing one. Okay. So uh, I guess we would have to redo our, our, um, our, uh, what do you call it? Our architecture spaces. So now instead of doing this here, I'm just going to draw it directly here. Make sure that my drawing plane is on the XY plane and simply do the same thing I was doing earlier, like this. Take that one and just draw a nice surrounding box around here. Like so. Now I have this wall that's so thick. When everybody is down to two, 
I'm gonna downgrade your um, line width as well for consistency. All right. Uh, top view. Right click CAD, or I can do that from here. Okay, I need to get the wind the door. Um, close, cancel that. Uh, start from here. Dab, 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 and that finish. Oh, I have to create another folder for my annotation. Create group, rename. Nope. Delete, rename, text, okay, rename, text, enter, <laughs> hold on, okay, so now I can drag everybody in there nice and smooth so I'm gonna save this file and also I'm also going to upload it uh, on github just as a habit so that it's easy to document this process okay so let me bring up smart git Okay, so we are saved. We are saved. So uh, now I can come to this view. What is this angle line? And what is this angle line? Let's go to shade it. No shading. What is this? I have one person that didn't work well. Draft wire, he drew you up there, and you, he drew you up there. Okay, so the reason why I drew them on the top plane, and it anyways drew them kind of funny, let me bring that back. As you can see, for example, this line, um, This line uh, sort of drew kind of all this zigzag is because the node were snapping everywhere it would read a node it would try to snap so because I there's a node there and not one here it snapped there so um, and that's because this option here in the snapping tool was not on when this option is on then it locks the snapping on the face um, you know uh, it locks the snapping on the face so if I check this on now you can see that I can even draw from here let's see let's try that so if I snap from here there and this is what is kind of cool about working in 3d in FreeCAD I snap there there and there so Oh, actually undo that and I snap here and I snap here okay let me hide what's whatever is down there so you can see it's there this is what we just drew and let me also hide this bed 
and delete this guy because we don't want that and hide this as well for now so I am going to just delete this we don't need that and delete that we don't need that and I am going to do the same thing here uh, check this check this check this the architecture spaces check that and check that okay now I'll do another one one two three four five six seven eh, and this guy is not red like the other guys let me change that make you red bingo okay all right so now I do the same process for with my architecture space architecture space and make sure I select that at least a perpendicular plane so I can now extrude this and snap it there like this select this guy as well extrude that all the way here select this guy and extrude this all the way here now we have good volumes so I will bring back the working plane to the top select this and now we can convert these guys to volumes let me just hide the house first house so we see what we are working with select that and let me check the first select content to view screen so when I pan around that's what I pan around select that now convert our guys to to um, the architecture space so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you in wireframe that uh, in wireframe mode that those these numbers it automatically generates this this information as soon as you convert that into an architecture space there you go okay so what were we doing earlier so this is the part where it crashed we will see if it's going to do the same thing view perspective view orthographic v o v o it doesn't work so view okay so come back to CAD so this is the part where it crashed so I'm gonna save it here and keep on working to see if it's gonna crash so I was renaming this bedroom space uh, rename rename that uh, da, 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 da. come to the data this is bathroom like that and also I want to move this thing so to move this text I think I have to go to the draft and check the edit let's try that edit and it gives you this red button where you can now uh, position reposition your text finish and there you go so come here bedroom as well um, Come to space label, bedroom, and I'm going to name this one communal space.
one thing that would be interesting is that when you highlight this for example also the text is highlighted so because it's kind of linked so it'd be cool to have both of them highlight uh, because right now if I select this text it doesn't highlight itself uh, so I am going to slightly center that as well uh, so I'm going to come to the text down here to the view and um, stuff to do with the text where are you Da, 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 da. Space type move. Da, da, da. Undefined. No, that's not what I'm looking for. It's a way to center the text, uh, but I also want to edit that like this. Okay, finish. So now let's look at our um, information. So uh, space type, I can tell it to be uh, laboratory, restroom is a big word for a small bed, bedroom bath. Is there something else that can uh, all right, well, we're just going to go with bathroom. Restroom, I guess. And this one, we will call it uh, space type undefined. We will call it uh, um, I guess the living has the feel of a lobby. We'll try that for this since there's no such things as living here. This one is just a room. Okay. So we have uh, our information there looking good. So um, now what we want to do is let's uh, say we brought uh, the first house back on. Uh, let me hide this. So what we can now do is select actually I'm gonna delete this text or actually keep it for now but for the dimensions I'm going to select all of them and then copy them copy check this and move that there not well okay I'm going to create a copy as well so that I'm going to have one version which is going to be for the 2d that I extracted here and one version that's going to be for that so that means I have to create another folder for this set of dimensions Okay, so what I can now do is I am going to take out uh, these dimensions out of that folder and bring these dimensions inside the annotation like this. So I can control everyone and I'm going to create a new folder and call this one spaces, rename spaces spaces rename spaces okay and just drag every one of these spaces in there so now if I hide this I've hidden all of the information concerning uh, the text as well, I'm going to take you out. Okay. Meter square. It gives me the meter square. Let's see if the spaces can give me any more information than just the spaces. 
So this is our information about the meta square, for example. Um, tags. What kind of tags can you tell us? You can provide us with tag. Uh, let's see. Can I enter a tag here? Tag, or let's see. Um, hello. Where is the tag going to show up? No, I don't know what that does. Number of people who typically occupy this space, that's good information. Uh, a material for this object, no, not concerned. Lighting the electric power needed to light this space in what? This is so much good information that is just contained inside the architecture space. Um, and, you know, finish floor, uh the finished floor of this space will be you know let's say for the bathroom will be floor tiles uh finish wall f floor thickness let's let's uh let's tell it to be two two hundred millimeter uh, finished ceiling, equipment, description, air conditioned. Okay, well, the area, we're given information about the area. And um, the vertical area as well. Okay, so that is that i have a feeling my annotation texts are too small we will fix that again i will go back to 1.5 mm -hmm. so some strange effects now this guy um moved and this guy as well so how do we fix that if we were to come to if we were to come to um let's see flip text okay and then there's another option hidden somewhere here if you go to the draft and you come to utilities flip dimension right click utilities uh, no you have to go from the top mode right click utilities flip dimension nothing is happening let's try that here right click Right click uh, utilities. Flip dimensions. Nope. Strange effect. Uh, flip text. True. Um, Huh. Okay, well, whatever. A strange effect for now. So, now we have a good looking drawing. We should bring back our shading mode on. Let me hide the roof for better viewing. Okay. Now, about our section plane. We have something good to start with. So, let's go to tech draw. And tech draw uh, for now let's uh, insert a new default drawing or did insert a drawing from template I'm gonna select an a3 landscape open 
let's see no i want an a3 landscape iso there used to be another template here whatever it is the same thing it's gonna do the job so i will keep this one okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to bring back my uh where are you section let me delete this other section he's not use oh maybe i can use him later uh, okay so i am going to select this section is there a way to view windows windows tiled windows no bring this here like this okay so now i select my section plane and i will extract the drawing by clicking on insert a view from an architecture section plane into the drawing and let's see what happens it's taking some time to load and then let me save this from here i am going to also save it on github uh, going to commit that and say starting to play with tech draw and um, exporting drawing docs to launch no I exporting drawing documents it's a lot easier and commit okay so now i can scroll out here and then so this is my drawing as you can see right here okay so now i have to talk about the scale so having that selected I can come here to the page that's the information uh, and inside the page I can open that and I select the arc view that's the that's the drawing that exported here so the scale here tells me that it is at um, 0 0.1 so I'm gonna go to 0, 0.0 two out of habit i know that it's going to work at 0 0.02 and i think that this is a scale of one is to uh 50 milli uh, 50 mi uh 50 uh no one is to 50 so uh i think that if you go to 0 0.01 it's going to be at a scale of one is to 100 if i am right okay so we are at a scale of 1 is to 100 let's pretend that we're satisfied with that because it fits well in our drawing screen both of them and I am going to stretch this like this or actually just full screen mode so this is our drawing and it is looking good the drawing lines are clean man except that the kitchen is a bit strange but you see how it's a bit pixelated and all that um, don't let that deter you it would print well so I can also come here and do some further adjustments in tech draw so having that uh, view selected still I can come here and change the line width for example I like to work with 0 0.2 uh, it's a lot thinner and smoother let's see and as you can see it's gonna take a little bit of time to load uh, because it's you know this is tech draw is it's updating everything at the same time and this is 
how everything it's connected as well so as you can see uh, the line width changed a little bit and also let's see what else do we want to touch uh, if we had a need to rotate that sometimes you import something and for some reason it rotates itself so you can use the rotation here as you can see I can just scroll that and rotate that drawing so anything you can always change the position on drawing sheet uh, of course the scale is a custom one uh, the, and of course uh, the position when I used to use that I could uh, if you modify this you see it changes here that's the X Y position but before I didn't I was not able to modify that from here so just like now uh, I think it's working now but it's a bit slow to, to modify the position from here as you can see it's lagging a little bit it's taking some time to uh, to adjust to make the changes uh, when I move it. but this is also a very handy tool especially if you want to align everything in the same position sometimes uh, since uh, we don't have yet an align tool uh, to the best of my knowledge at least um, which would be very handy and also an ability to lock the drawing uh, uh, on the screen where you want it to be like for example uh, have a lock next to it on the right here just like uh, you know an eye an eye that you would use to hide the object so these are visual cues for example um, so now that's the drawing what else do we have here as information we have the architecture label uh, uh, we can change that if we want to easily know what we are drawing so I can call that floor plan for example so it's easy to see uh, because you can have many objects where uh, you have a section you have a floor plan you have a detail so you probably need to rename that so that you can easily distinguish them on the tree yourself um, and also uh, the source it tells you what the source is from so you can always change the source of any drawing uh, you see I can change I can I can select the other section and let's do that and let uh, let's use the recompute and you see that the, the other section is not reading anything in particular um, except not even anything so it's not reading anything you will see that once I insert um, let me do a little test here for you uh, what can I insert here what I'm going to do actually is just change the section I'm going to bring back the other video uh, the other window tile like this so I am going to work here go to this view and file save so that just in case it crashes and I am going to take this and rotate uh, I will come um, to the data placement position and the axis so I want to rotate it along the X axis so I'm going to come to uh, the axis X axis and I'm going to put one and here I'm going to put 90 or 180 180 and turn off the Z 90 okay there you go and likewise maybe increase that for a bit of visibility uh, the arrow size I'm going to get you at 100 and uh, display height what is this one this one is um, 30 and 10 and 30 so let's try to the same 10 and 30 30 
and let's move that as well almost about um, this one is located at uh, it is located at um, negative 6 on the X so I'm going to put negative 6 on the X here as well copy this negative 6 mm copy that bring that here paste hold on paste okay okay so now I am going to put that uh, I'm going to I am going to select that and then scroll that uh, on the on the Y scroll that like this so let's let's say I wanted to cut right there for example or maybe here for example no I wanted to cut right here because I have extra information here so let's say I want it to be at a negative 8 no actually at negative 12 point 2 okay that is working so you will see how it will generate the drawing elevation here once I add uh, the information that needs to go there so where's my first house or my second house let's take the second house first and then let's add that into let me rename this let me rename this section rename section long section okay so now second house section and add okay so there you go we have our section here as you can see now you can see the intricacies of what's going on inside the drone and you can see that it's not in the right position so what I will do is rotate this drawing but let me add the other one I'm going to add the first, the first house all of the information select that and then select the section the second section and also add that there as well okay now we have our information so now I can select this uh, drawing come to the floor plan and then I can tell it to rotate 90 or negative 90 like this <coughs> So as you can see, I have a section here. Uh, so maybe I want to also bring back this other drawing. Uh, this is not the floor plan anymore. You see, so I want to select that and tell it to be the source. Again, I want it to be first section. And uh, recompute. Okay, so now let me undo the rotation. A rotation zero. This rotation is zero. We are back to zero. And then I'm going to select a section and add the section. Go back to Tech Draw Workbench, Tech Draw, and add the section. okay and we will rename that section rename that long section like this likewise we will rotate that as well negative uh, 90 let's change the scale first where's the scale we want to change the scale to 0 0.01 
and then rotate that now negative 90 okay so we are in business now I want to align that with the drawing I want to align this with the drawing so let me check this under on the y-axis is a 271 let's say I want that to be a 280 at 280 and that I want that at 30 for example like this okay so now I can select this and on the on the um, on the X I'm going to put you at uh, let's see to 80 to 80 to 80 oh you're so slow right now to 80 what happens that's gonna go up okay now to 80 and you you come here okay so it's a bit tricky playing with this if you want to align that but uh, that's uh, not the point of this for now so here I'm going to go to 0 0.2 like before enter okay So that's our section, as you can see. Let me file save that. Now let's do a nice interesting test. Let's, uh, this was generated here, haha. Uh, let's get it to work and then move that out of the way. Do not copy, just move that out of the way okay so remember oops what happened i have two of them actually delete that and de delete that as well uh, okay so remember that last time we were drawing this we gave it some uh some uh, properties go to selection and we want to select the sketch the sketch that had the constraints total length total width so let's change that to 10 now see what happens it takes a bit of time to load bingo it did update um however uh our door something strange happened here but it did update okay so now what happened to the door let me hide this and hide that. Uh, Blender. Oh, okay. The window was not supposed to move because it was constrained. So it had no choice than to be forced out of its way. Let's undo that.
but it's good to see how we can just update the drawing uh, like that. Now it did not uh, undo. 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 Okay, so <laughs> strange things. So apparently the undo does not work when it comes to modifying things as to do the sketch. Something interesting to notice. So that means that we have to redo our section. Let's see how far our undo went. Can you generate me another section, my friend? Generate. Tech draw and give me something. Select exactly one sketch. I'm selecting exactly one sketch. Okay, so let's bring this back, full screen mode. We will have to do the same thing again. Uh, 0 0.2. As you can see, this is uh, the slightly frustrating area of tech drawers is that uh, it takes an age sometimes to upload depending on uh, let's scale that down depending on whether on the complexity level the level of complexity that your drawing possesses because you know it has to update everything and it thinks from the tree down perspective you know so um it has to go back in history to update the initial stuff and make the changes all across all the way to the drawings and stuff like that so um it's something i've noticed i don't exactly know how it's thinking behind the software programming aspect of it well let's continue moving along as if this was uh, the desired result that we are satisfied with with working with as far as uh, the you know the the sections and the information and everything uh, we can see our cuts our bold lines uh, let let's highlight that can we do that uh, so the rendering mode here is fall is wireframe so let's go to solid and see what happens so in solid mode you see that it actually embodies the colors and this has been fixed sometimes it didn't used to work so it's a good thing to see it's working now uh, so in this mode you don't need to rotate that and i don't exactly understand what's going on with that but uh, it i guess it's how it is and uh, uh, okay so in this mode you don't need to what is this line and where does it come from strange artifact so let's go back to wireframe and we would have to rotate that see the line is not there anymore so i'm not sure exactly where that line came from uh negative 90 like this and we want to sell it to show hidden let's try that F hidden okay so 
So the thing that's interesting to understand about the way that FreeCAD thinks about hidden information is that it reads the hidden information that's behind you. So imagine you're looking forward, the section cut is looking forward. And so, um, so you, what you see is what is in front of you. So what, when, you know, in programs like Revit or, or you know, Archicad, I think that when they say hidden, it means that the information that's be behind what's hidden behind in the wall that's in front of you or the stuff that's in front of you. So whatever you see in front of you um, is hidden. Is is Whatever is hidden is whatever you do not see which is in front of you because it's obstructed by another object of some sort. But in FreeCAD, what what it understands as hidden is whatever is behind you. So if you want to show what's hidden in FreeCAD, uh, if you want to show what's the information that's behind your head, for example, like let's say, you know, you cannot look behind you, but you want to see what's behind you without, let's say, turning your head around and looking in that direction, but just projecting the information that's behind you in front of you. But that's what FreeCAD understands as what is hidden. Uh, so let's go back to um, false <clears throat> and I want to select show feel this is actually what I want as well I want to check that to be true so in this case it gives me uh, the ability to see the areas that have been cut because just like here where we were able to uh, make this line is kind of bold and this other line is kind of thin line width of one uh, so uh, different shade on the tech draw or the drawing sheet uh, this is the way that it appears <clears throat> so um, so this in the future you'll be able to apply different hatches to it and uh, you know and do a lot much more with it when the program gets developed even further uh, you can also change the color as well uh, in the future if you export it into programs like Inkscape for example uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can go about modifying this object as well uh, once you have generated them okay so let's try to do the same thing for the floor plan we want to show fill here true so it's going to show the fill for any object that is uh, a closed face like a closed volume so if this was since this is a closed volume it's going to um, it's going to show this kind of dark gray uh, light gray uh, hatch as a feel so uh, that's good to have as a feature another what else do we have here okay editable uh, what is that what does this do a list I am not exactly sure what that is editable text substitution substitution values for the editable string in the symbol well let's try that hello free card world today we are doing a tutorial on sections check okay and what does that do okay keep label true okay I don't know what that does but I don't know what that does but uh, whatever caption what is that hello caption hello nothing I do not see it anywhere so I don't know what the caption does as well um, all on what is this if hidden objects must be shown or not false
Okay. Now let's talk about the, the, the dimension text as well that I generated. Um, so what I'm going to do is I can either generate um, the annotation which has the groups, the spaces as well. So, but I am going to generate um, the 2D line work. So let's do that. I'm going to add the 2D line work inside the section. Go back to the architecture and add the section. Okay. My 2D line work is not showing up. Well, it's showing up because you can see the table, but some of the other elements are not. Not exactly why, sure why. But let's do uh, the annotation instead. Let's bring up the spaces. And then let's do the annotation as a block. So, and then add the section and press the plus button. Let's see what happens. And we have our nice annotations looking pretty. What do we do with it? Okay, so now this is where we can come here and play with the other settings called the font size. Let me bring this down to six, see what happens. It's taking a minute. Oh, let me bring this down to three and see what happens. Okay. Now we have some good text. Now, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, sometimes FreeCAD does this. Where, no, it does uh, this kind of stuff here where it generates some of the dimensions falsely. Could be a bug, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, sometimes changing that, uh, you see, it's inverted here and there. So it, it appears strange here as well. So let's see what happens if we were to try to see it. Uh, invert this quickly. Hide that. Um, hide this. Select this dimension. And if I tell it to be, let's say to flip true. Okay. Let's see how it updates here. Okay, so it, it did change here. And also, one thing to also have in mind is that when updating, uh, if, you know, whatever is hidden is not going to show up in the section plane. For example, if I hide this roof like this, and I was to come here and select this generated section and just selecting it you can see it puts a check mark there which means that it has to be updated so by recomputing that uh, you would see that it's going to generate a new drawing without the roof because you know the roof you know or whatever is hidden you know or whatever is basically hidden so if I come back there and I bring back first house and second house entirely and select this guy again you will see that um, it will generate all the remaining information that was hidden before. So that's one way that you can control uh, what you want to show at a specific given time. In a workflow that's useful, for example, uh, let's say uh, a client comes to you and he wants a quick change and you want to show him what he wants and you want to extract a drawing very fast. So you can, you know, just hide an object and it will extract, you know, you can print the floor plan without the object or press the high button and the object shows and 
uh, and you can extract a drawing so it's very interesting that you can do that like that uh, so moving on all right so now we have our annotations we have our uh, our dimensions as you can see the exterior uh, uh, surrounding floor is not there anymore so I'm going to regenerate the drawing <clears throat> okay and it's back so now you can see why using the space was uh, useful because it kind of provides you this overall um, uh, this overall uh, square footage uh, on the floor plan itself and uh, maybe I am going to also hide um, you know these bathroom tiles because of the way that they appear on the drawing they're a bit thick and that's because we have applied some properties to it so uh, now that I've hidden that you would see what I was telling you earlier you know you can have a floor plan not sure what you don't want it to show and also by the way while we are at it um, you can also generate or create colored floor plans to give you an example of what I mean is uh, let's say uh, let's hypothetically say that we want to uh, we could use for example uh, the uh, let's go to toggles uh, go to selection this is um, the 2d that was that was used to generate the the spaces okay so you can see that if I change the color for example I can make it orange I can make this one uh, yellow and I can make this one um, you know maybe this dark blue and if I were to if I wanted to generate this Actually, since it's also in the group annotation, let me see if it's going to show up without me having to add it because it's visible. No, it's not going to show. So what I have to physically do is probably add that specific object inside the section like this and press the add button. And then let's see what happens. Okay, so this is how you can hypothetically have a generated floor plan. Well, the, but an option that could have been interesting would be to probably have it as transparent, for example, as having the ability to ha toggle between transparency. Um, uh, let's see if I give it a transparency value of 80, for example. I select that. Okay, so it doesn't change that here. It only changed the transparency value here. Um, and, and that's the strange thing, you know, uh, that uh, this color scheme is connected in the 3D, uh, but it's connected to tech draw, but not, let's say, the other properties, like, let's say, making it transparent. But anyways, what I was saying is that, let's hide that for a moment and update this. What I'm saying, for example, is that if you have a bunch of 2D line work, for example, that you wanted to show on top of that object, you probably sometimes want them to be, um, and uh, you probably sometimes want them to 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 appear above the the, the sketch that you created. So, um, but in this case, you see it covers everything. So sometimes you don't want this kind of uh, option. So this is something that if anybody is interested in uh, attempting to take a look at, then uh, they should, they're very welcome uh, to take a look at that. So that's how that works. Uh, now, what else can I tell you about this uh, generating sections? Uh, da, 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 da. And then of course here you can change the name of this editable text uh, just enter you know architecture tutorial you know and stuff like that and uh, author name uh, Regis stuff like that so everything is basically basic but to create this kind of template uh, 
it's probably going to be a tutorial for another day uh, you need to use Inkscape you know this is where uh, the streamline process between um, the streamline process between the open source application becomes very interesting where you you know FreeCAD is you know understands the language of Inkscape very well or or FreeCAD understands the language of Blender to some extent very well so uh, all of these programs are you know they, they they speak to each other pretty well in in my opinion uh, for the open source community or the open source world as a whole um, so that's how you generate uh, those floor plans. So um, what else can I talk to you about? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a short break right now and probably come back for the next part.